Hello, my name is Mike Chambers. I'm a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and Certified Maintenance and Reliability Professional. I work for a company called Abidian, or a management consulting firm with locations in South Carolina and Alabama. What I'm going to do the next several minutes is provide an overview of a real-time production monitoring system using Microsoft Excel. We chose Microsoft Excel for a number of reasons, uh, beginning with the general familiarity that folks tend to have with Excel. It also tends to be relatively easy to use, and it's also cost effective. The format that we use is overall equipment effectiveness, or OEE. In other words, we gather uh, quality data, performance data, and availability data uh, out in the plant, bring that together and create an overall equipment effectiveness or efficiency for the production area. Production data is then shared throughout the plant at the various uh, local operator consoles out on the plant, uh, plant floor. It's also shared in offices throughout the plant and even a plant TV network in the case of one client. Efficiencies and expected change over times are visually highlighted what we're trying to do is provide at a glance where you're at, what your strengths are, where your opportunities are. One of the things that we've been able to do is incorporate production uh, and quality logs, operator logs. Those can be added as an option into the system. Historic data can also be stored offline uh, for later analysis and trending. We found this to be a very cost-effective solution uh, again, it's based on Microsoft Excel that's readily available. We've also found that it's possible to reuse existing sensors and even programmable logic controllers, PLCs, that are already present in your plan. Looking at a brief flow chart, what we have again are the sensors from the line. Again, these are in the form of OEE with speed, uptime, and quality. Those go into a programmable logic controller or PLC. That PLC communicates with Microsoft Excel. Uh, in the case of Alan Bradley, that communications would be via their uh, software package called RS Links. In addition to the Excel spreadsheet, which is usually resident in one PC, another PC is located on the floor for the operators to enter information like job details. That could be the work order number or job number, it could be job specs, it could be the run quantity for the particular job. That floor PLC, floor PC is tied into the plant's shared network intranet, if you will, which ultimately feeds those job details into the Excel spreadsheet. The Excel spreadsheet manipulates the information coming to it from the sensors information coming to it from the operators and provides uh, real-time data then to various monitors located around the plant floor. Those monitors could be as easy as a PC monitor uh, on the previously mentioned operator PCs or it could be a projector uh, displaying on the uh, plant wall in a small plant or it could be uh, via TV monitors throughout the plant. But the bottom line is it's real time and it's on the plant floor. The Excel spreadsheet also feeds the information back to the shared network. That can then go to the uh, office PC area where you can see again real time data, what's occurring out on the floor. Uh, it can also be viewed on plant TVs as one client did. And it can be uh, stored offline for trending and analysis at a later time. We're now in Microsoft Excel 2010 in the main spreadsheet. On the left hand side you can see the job status and efficiencies for a production area known as line 8. On the right hand side uh, we have buttons for the various windows that are part of the real time production efficiency monitoring system. Let's break down what you see beginning with the job status and efficiencies in the upper left hand corner. The current job is uh, 787948, that could be a job or a work order number. The run quantity is 410,000 units. The system calculates the quantity produced. We subtract the two to get the quantity remaining. 
and then uh, immediately below that is the speed. In this particular case, it's in tubes per minute. It's in whatever units per minute, units per hour, units per day that uh, you want to utilize. Underneath that, we have the minutes, estimated minutes to a changeover. In this case, 566 uh, minutes. Uh, that's a little bit difficult to deal with, so we give a estimated changeover time. And you see in this case, October the 3rd at 11.58 p.m. Immediately below the changeover time is the job status. To the extent that you're on target, you'll see a comment similar to what's there. If you're operating above targets, it'll be in green, and below targets, it'll be in red. The box immediately below that is for the last 60 minutes. Again, OEE involves speed, uptime, and quality. In this particular case, again, the speed is in tubes per minute. They're at 144 tubes per minute for the last 60 minutes. That's above target, so it's in green. Uptime is within the target range at 91, and quality is 94.2. Again, for this particular product at this time, above target in green. We multiply those together, and we get an efficiency of 83.8 for the last 60 minutes. Immediately below that are the job details. These again are entered by the operators. Everything else that you will see is, uh, is done by the system, at least the, uh, the calculations. In this particular case, the work order job number, the TETF numbers, those are profile numbers for that particular product, and then the run quantity that we saw before. Moving over to the buttons on the right hand side, the buttons with the blue background will add various windows. The green background will add uh, different programs uh, from a production schedule to profile sheets, reports, a scrap report, etc. The yellow background items will reformat the screen. In this particular case, uh, you can see the Excel, the, uh, Excel bars. You typically wouldn't want to run that way. So you would click on full screen, and they would disappear. Notice how the system automatically resizes itself to give you the best uh, possible viewing area. If I wanted to bring the toolbar back, I'd click on toolbar, and you can see it comes right back. Immediately below that are some system instructions, update, uh, update the system, stop the system, or exit Excel altogether. Let's look at the instructions very quickly. You see a window comes up with uh, some brief instructions. There's also a one-point lesson that can be called up. A one-point lesson is a one-pager that will walk the operator, walk the user through the system. There's also a uh, manual that is currently 50-60 pages long that can also be called up. Okay, let's go back up to the top. You can see beside most of the, uh, the windows, there is an X. What you can do, like uh, most Windows applications, you can click on that X and it will disappear. To the extent I want to bring up uh, details for the last five minutes, I click on the last five minute button. You can see it pops up as shown here to the right. For the most part, we're, we're operating above target, so it's in green. I want to look at the last 60 minutes, the last 24 hours. Notice again, we're largely above target. Things are generally in green. Now, notice also that the screen resized itself. The more windows I open, the smaller it gets. To the extent I wanted to add a logbook to that as well, you can see it became even smaller, but now I have an online logbook where the operator can enter information. This logbook can be in Microsoft Word, it can be in uh, SharePoint, it can be in uh, Microsoft OneNote. Again, we're, we're getting kind of small there. What we found is most of the time, the operators will run showing the last five minutes, and that's what we're going to do here. To the extent I want to bring up, I uh, want to open, excuse me, a bar graph, I can do that. The standard bar graphs are for the last 24 hours. 
efficiency by hour the last 24 hours. The red bar is a target. The gold bar here is the average value. You can see that we've averaged 84.2 percent efficiency the last 24 hours. Below that I have a month to date uh, production and the red bar is my target. Below that to the extent that you are involved in gain or profit sharing we can put in an estimate for the contribution for this production area as part of the uh, gain or profit sharing. And then below that we have the best days for the current month. You see in this case they have a uh, quality where they produce no scrap for an entire day, uptime of 94%, efficiency of 62, or excuse me, 66.2%, and a best day production of 232,359 units. What we're after with this block is to recognize that yesterday is what it is. What we want to do is be better today than we were yesterday, and then realize that through the, the spirit of continuous improvement, we want to be even better tomorrow and top that best day that we've had already this year, excuse me, this month. Again, to close out, we'll click on the X up in the upper right hand corner. I can also call up a production schedule. This loads another spreadsheet uh, for production schedule. You can see the various products that are being run here. I can also call up profile sheets tell me how to set up the various jobs. I can also call up uh, various reports. In this case, they're quality reports, the different quality reports that are run for the various products on this production line. <coughs> Below that, I have other screens. There's a downtime screen that uh, automatically tracks the downtime by section on the line. In this particular case, there are four sections, extrusion, a header, a printer, and a capper. I can enter a code. These codes are user configurable. Uh, and then to the extent I want to, I can enter comments. For example, this last one says it's a changeover from uh, work order number 756-894 to 768-325. Click on I'll, or I'll line 8, display, and it takes me back. I have a similar screen for scrap. And I have a, another screen for month to date. Again, the average speed, the average uptime, the average quality for a given day, it gives me an average efficiency for that day. Again, in the upper right, I have the best day for the month. There's another screen that I want to take you to, and it's called All Lines. What we have here is for one production area, line 8, you can see that one production area, line 8, is shown within the integrated lines in this particular plant. They have three integrated lines, line 5, 8, and 9. They also have a production area known as Post Deco with various uh, operating lines and then everything else within the plant uh, shown there at the bottom. I want to talk a little bit about the colors. As I get inside of 30 minutes of a changeover, the estimated end of run and the uh, comments area, the status area, will turn to yellow and will indicate the minutes to the changeover uh, to allow the operating team to get ready for, for the changeover. To the extent the line is down, it will be shown as black in black. Again, the, the intent is to uh, capture the attention of those in the plant to help out the operators to help get the line back online. I mentioned earlier that to the extent you were below target, it would be in red. You can see an example here on silk screen one. There's also an orange color if I'm inside of 60 minutes for a changeover. Again, what I'm trying to do is lower the organization so they get ready to assist the operators for the changeover. There's also a uh, ability to highlight that I'm ready for a quality check. In this particular plant, they call that first article. Again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, show in the status that I'm operating above target, that'll be in green. Should I start to overproduce, 
then it will go red again to alert the organization I'm overproducing. Uh, it's time to check things out and particularly uh, potentially change to another product. And then the uh, the black one here, the last one I want to talk about, is there's a button for the operator to push if they need help out on the line. To return to the line eight production area, I click on the heading for line eight, and it takes me right back. You can see here I can drop the buttons; they'll disappear when I hit the X here. They come back just like that. To the extent I want to uh, show the blue um, quality signal we talked about a moment ago, first article at this plant, I would click on first article to make it go away, the X. And to the extent the operator wants to uh, send up a signal they need help on the line, there's a black help is needed. Again, I make that go away the same way. That concludes our overview. Should you have any questions or want to pursue your own real-time production monitoring system, feel free to contact Davidian at 843-536-0942. You can also email us at info at abidian.com or visit us on the internet at abidian.com. Thanks. Have a safe and productive day.